All right, guys, we are live with Megan Colley. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Doing good, doing good. Uh, it was just another day in Panama City. I'm working, I'm working, and then uh, I get a text from you, and it's like, hey, look at this. I was like, whoa. Uh, <laughs> I called you right away. I stopped. I walked away from it. I was like, I, you know, this is definitely a phone call. Uh, so what's going on? What are you doing uh, October 4th? I'm getting a new dog. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm fighting for Invicta again. That is awesome. First of all, congratulations. Thank you. Um, yeah, Invicta FC 37. It's October 4th, Kansas City, Kansas, um, UFC Fight Pass, all that good stuff. Um, yeah. You know, what? we're less than two weeks away. How did this fight come to be? Um, short photo, short notice fight. Do you like this? All that kind of stuff. So uh, kind of take us from the beginning and walk us through it. Okay. Well, um, it was Saturday and my manager, I was at the dog park with some friends and pancakes and we were about to leave and my phone rings. I look at my manager. He like, he never calls me. Um, and so I was like, Hey, what's up? And he's like, hey, can you make weight? I'm like, uh, yeah, <laughs> what, what's up? And he's like, oh, they've got a fight for you. I was like, oh, yeah, like, tell me more. Right. He's like, yeah, uh, it's uh, October 4th. And I was like, that's pretty close. And, you know, I wasn't really looking at my calendar. I was at the dog park. I was on my phone. And I was just like, okay, October 4th. He's like, yeah, you got, like, two training weeks. And then, like, you know, fly out, like, the fight week. And I was like, okay, yeah, I got like three weeks or whatever. And then I look at the calendar. I'm like, um, you're giving me like 13 days notice. <laughs> I, I, um, yeah. <clears throat> have you ever done that before? Have you ever fought on a short notice fight? No, this is completely out of character for me. Um, fighting is already like difficult enough. I kind of get stressed out and whatnot. So um, when I, I like having things planned, I'm just like a planner. Um so I kind of plan things in advance all the time and I like to have a good time frame and I like want to be prepared. So def this is definitely out of character for me, but um, yeah, I think it's an awesome experience and an opportunity and I feel like I'd be stupid if I turned it down. So there was, yeah, we're not doing that. <laughs> oh, oh no, for sure. Um, if we can go back real quick, uh, August 9th, um, Invicta, first fight for one. Um, we really appreciate what you did. It was really cool. We did a whole killer pancakes week. Um, I, I still get people that DM me through Instagram and Facebook. They loved it. Uh, they still did. Um, it was really cool. Um, Jessica Borga, uh, she liked it. She kind of did something like that a couple weeks ago for her Bellator fight. She did a whole week. Uh, it's really cool. It's picking up. I actually have another. I got a UFC fighter two weeks from now that will do the same thing. So it's kind of cool. It's something that... Uh, you know, caught on. So first of all, thank you for that. And hopefully, hey, maybe we'll do it again. We'll see. Yeah. Um, but if I can just kind of, you know, I went on your Instagram page and uh, you wrote like a post um, about that fight. And I'll just read this up real quick. You're like, um, so sorry, guys, it wasn't my night. I have no excuse. I'm very thankful for the love and support I received this week. Uh, this one hurts bad, but I'll be back. Um, you're back. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Is it there's my favorite word in the English dictionary is redemption. Is there is that kind of going through your head? You just kind of want to get back into that Invicta cage. Yeah, um, we kind of feel like this is an opportunity to to, you know, display all the things that I didn't, you know, in a sense, like kind of not necessarily right my wrongs, but like a nice redo. You know, I get another opportunity, which we didn't think was going to happen. Like, honestly, I felt like my next option was to fight local and you know, then maybe the beginning, the end of this year, beginning of next year, be able to get on another card. Um, I just genuinely felt like um, they had wanted me to get more experience before they welcomed me back. Um, and it didn't turn out that way. You know, I, I told my manager, I'm like, hey, you know, I know it's a long shot, but like, will you at least try? And I'm glad I did because yeah, it's a, another shot. It's redemption. You know, I get a I get a chance to prove myself and I'm stepping up short notice. So they know I'm game. Um, so yeah, it just feels good. I feel lucky. It's a good opportunity. Oh, absolutely. And you know, we talked about it off air. Um, how, you know, first fight debut fight, uh, jitters, 
cameras, lights, big arena, Invecta FC, kind of, you know, a dream, right? It's a dream to fight that, a uh, dream to fight in the UFC and just keep going up and up and up. Yeah. How, um, you know, prepare, what's your, like, your emotional state? Like, okay, this is it. I've done this before. Now it's just, it's kind of more just about fighting. It's more about just getting a W. It's more about that. Uh, you know, have you thought about that at all? Or is it all just so quick and so new and uh, you're kind of just, you're wait and see. I'm kind of, uh, I actually feel like I'm a little, I'm having a little bit more fun with it. Like today I just found myself in like really good spirits and like listening to music loud on the way to the gym and smiling and dancing. And I picked a really fun walkout song. So um, I just, I feel definitely like I'm having more fun. I mean, obviously it's like, well, I just signed the contract this morning, literally this morning. So, um, you know, I, I guess, I mean, I've processed it, but I still haven't time to, haven't had time to process it. But I think sure. that it's, I think it's good for me to take something on short notice because then I don't have the opportunity to self sabotage. <laughs> okay, um, a question I've never asked this question to a fighter. I just, uh, I think we have a great uh, relationship, fighter um, yeah. announcer relationship. Is um is like the fight blues? Is that like a real thing? Um, after a loss, is it just a real thing? Like gosh, there's just nothing in the world, you know, uh, you have a great dog, you have a great life, great boyfriend, uh, the gym's awesome, but is it like the whole world sucks because after a loss? Is that like a real thing? Yeah, it was super real. Um, okay. If I have to be like super candid about it, I was, um, I wasn't myself for a while. I kind of, you know, stayed away from social media. I didn't really respond to anybody. I I think I sulked for like a solid two weeks and like it kind of affected everything around me. Like I didn't have motivation to go to the gym. Like instead of letting this fuel me, I was so disappointed in myself, so disappointed in my performance, like just really knew that I could give more. And so like I was, you know, kind of like, well, it was me, which I shouldn't be. And so after a little bit of that, Gabe was like, all right, like it's too much of this, like suck it. The up <laughs> like right oh so, um put, uh, put on your big girl pants and accept it and then like my head coach and you know the people at the gym were like trying to lure me back in the gym like just okay we're getting back into things see you at this time like just stuff like that so that really helped but it's real it feels heartbreaking like I equated it to like I felt like I was you know, Gabe and I were breaking up. Like I was just so heartbroken and I would randomly start crying real dramatic, but, but yeah, it's real because you just invest so much time in it and right. you train so hard and you work so hard and all those hours, all those ass whoopings, like it just felt like it was, it was for nothing. And I know it is, but you know, it's just like after a breakup, you know, you feel like, Oh, I just wasted so much time, which isn't the case. It was lessons, but Sure. Uh, no, you're so right. There's no, there's no other sport like it. A baseball, if you strike out, you literally bat 35 minutes later. Uh, you know, fighters, you guys, in a way, you fight two, three times a year at most. And uh, for you, you know, I remember talking to Felicia eight, ten months ago about her debut fight. And, you know, you just got kind of got signed in Invecta. And it was just like that back and forth. And I remember, like, you're waiting for a fight. So it seems like it's been 10 months, 12 months, 14 months. And it's like, OK, I finally have my shot. And it's you put all that energy in it, all that, you know, hard work, training, cardio, everything into it. And, yeah, you want to put up the best 15 minutes you can or just uh, pull a Mazda off, just six seconds knee and be done with it. You know, that's my game plan for you. Yeah, right. Get in, get out. <laughs> get in and get out. Um, and it's you said some uh, funny about the music. Also, another thing I get all the time, and uh, I watch it, too, on my phone. It's one of those things I go through my phone, all the kids' pictures, all the fight interviews and there's that dance of you and Felicia, uh, <laughs> that 15 second dance. I'm literally like getting the camera up to the cage at the jungle yeah. in Orlando, Florida. I walk away for two seconds and you and Felicia Spencer put on a Michael Jackson dance a thon at the same time. Oh, I know it was like perfectly synchronized. Hey, come here. It was perfectly synchronized. And that, right. that's just like, I attribute that to our friendship. Like that's deep. <laughs> exactly. That's it. And that's you, you know, that's uh, pancakes. You got the rug rat shirt on, you know, that's, that's Megan Cauley. So we got to get that. Uh, if you are in that zone going into the fight in FC versus hope chase, we haven't mentioned her name, uh, maybe on purpose or maybe not, 
but your opponent, Hope Chase, uh, in the bantamweight division, um, you know, do you have any, you know, it's very early, very soon, any idea on Hope and her fighting style and anything of that nature? Yeah, I know that, you know, she's, she's dangerous on the feet. She, uh, she, uh, is like an awesome striker. Um, just very aggressive. She's gonna definitely try and throw everything at me. Um, so that's what I know. And, you know, we only got two weeks, so it's not like, you know, we have specific times to game plan, but we do have a game plan and we're going in there prepared and we're excited and things felt awesome tonight um, at Pro. So, yeah, it's going to be a good one. That is good. That's good. We're very, very excited for you. We cannot wait. Um, you know, real quick, if we can, we kind of touched on her. We haven't mentioned uh, kind of Felicia Spencer's last fight against Cyborg. How's she doing? Um, to me, everyone's talked about how her stock, even on a loss, it kind of even went up. Uh, her stock, her name, her brand, all that, you know, you know genre kind of went up. Um, you know, what's your take on Felicia Spencer and her performance against Cyborg uh, a month, month and a half ago? She's a loser. <laughs> I'm just <laughs> I thought you all right, Felicia, bye. <laughs> oh, my God, no. Her fiancé, Todd, all the, like, after we went, literally right after the fight, like, I'm limping, and we went out to go get some drinks, and Todd's at the bar, and he's like, I'm hanging out with some losers, like, making fun of us, like, such a jerk. But, um, oh, Pancakes has arrived <laughs> with the ball. Okay. Um, but, uh, you know, I think that she put on an awesome performance. She went out there and she killed it. And, you know, she feels as if, you know, she was pretty heartbroken because she felt as if like she could win the fight and just, it didn't go her way. Um, but you know, obviously, yeah, it does raise Felicia's stock and it definitely proves that she is one of the best featherweights in the world. And honestly, I feel as if, you know, that if they end up meeting in the future, I think it's going to go a different way for sure. Like we honestly thought that it was going to go a different way the first time, but if she doesn't get it the first time, like I have Felicia winning that fight nine times out of 10. Right. And just to kind of be honest, they probably will never meet again in a way with cyborg with her age and her signing with Bellator right. and Felicia and just her prime. And then Dana White was just, um, you know, head over heels about uh, yeah. Felicia just coming to the office, uh, you know, just congratulated her, like just her name and everyone I've talked to. It's like, people are like, Oh my gosh, Felicia's been, I'm like, yeah, Felicia, you Orlando jungle. It's like, yeah, it's oh, like yeah. her name is went up in a way, which is really cool. She deserves it. Great person. She's always been gracious, uh, you know, to us and me. So it's right. very cool. She's, um, she's going to do really great things. And honestly, when I was accepting this fight, cause I was like, Oh, should I do it? Should I not? I was saying, like, if Felicia can fight Cyborg, I can fight anybody. Like, get the hell out of here. Who do I think I am? Like, Felicia just fought Cyborg. <laughs> right, right. So. You know, yeah, she's, so that, that Cyborg uh, lady, she's been around. She's pretty good. <laughs> yeah. Um, two, two other kind of fights I wanted to talk to you about in this area. Uh, one was Jessica Borga. She, you know, trains out of Lakeland over there, Champions MMA. First round victory, armbar, Bellator. Um, you know, I actually talked to her last week. Uh, how, did you see that fight? Anything about her? Yeah, I saw the fight. And I've actually, I had the opportunity to train with Jessica before. Um, and we've actually competed against each other a few times in grappling tournaments. And she's awesome. And so, you know, it was a beautifully executed armbar. Like, I saw it and I was like, oh, my God, that was beautiful. And I instantly messaged her. I was like, hell yeah, that's awesome. Like, Very cool. Yeah, her grappling is is ridiculous. She's definitely one to look out for. Yeah, she is. She's got a bright future. And you said, uh, I just talked to her like last week. And she, she felt like she was winning the fight. Uh, she didn't want to go to round two. That's what she told me. She's like, hey, I just didn't want to start another round. And she's like, I'm just going to grab her arm and make her submit. I'm like, that's kind of what you try to do for five minutes. But yeah. she's like, I just knew I was going to get it. Like, I did not want to go to round two. So it was just crazy. And I just... She's got a lot of momentum. Like one of the names she's talked about in that interview too was Cyborg, because Cyborg now, uh, you know, went to Bellator. Just it's a small knit world, right? This or uh, Central Florida female MMA. Felicia just fought her. And who knows? Six months from now, maybe Jessica will fight Cyborg. It's crazy. Um, one of the last ones, and then we'll, of course we'll end it. Invecta FC 37. Megan Colley will be fighting on that. Follow her on Instagram at Megan Colley. 
uh, follow Pancakes. I think she's got uh, yeah. Instagram Pan- as well. And to the cakes. <laughs> there you go. Um, it's in Tampa, probably eight days, nine days after your fight. Uh, Joanna to Jacek versus Michelle Watterson. I love that fight. Um, female MMA, Joanna is just like this legendary uh, fighter as well. Who do you yeah. think will win that fight? What's your uh, take on that? Oh, I'm excited for that fight. You know, um, I like both of them. I think you want as a beast. Like, so she's really, really good. But I also love Michelle. I love the whole mom champ thing. And she's really improved so much over these past couple of fights. And so, I mean, I have Yolanda winning, but I would definitely be happy if Michelle won. Yeah, it's like one of those fights, It's it, it can go either way. You feel like Michelle's kind of ascending, and maybe Yuana might be descending a tad, but is Yuana is still descending from being the greatest female fighter ever, in a way. So it's like, where are they right now, 2019, October in Tampa? I can't wait. That's crazy. Are you guys going to that? Um, no, I don't think we are planning on it, um, but... Yeah, I'll definitely be watching it. When you said Tampa, I thought you were going to ask me about Bare Knuckle. <laughs> like, oh. I don't know that much. <laughs> oh, wait. So, a question for you, and this will sure. determine if we ever talk again or not. Um, who do you have winning, Bobby Knuckles or Adesanya? Wow. Uh, I don't know if you saw on Fight Bananas, we did a whole fight breakdown that we released today on Fight Bananas YouTube of this fight. I didn't see it. Okay. Um, I, okay. I'm rooting for Robert Whitaker. I think Israel Asanya is going to win. And this is my reason behind this. And I don't think (laughs) I can just see it already. I've got to (laughs) go. Oh my gosh. Best interview in the history of Fight Bananas. (laughs) Israel is undefeated. I just, he's 17 and 0, and I used to go against John Jones when he was on the run, Demetrius Johnson. I just, I started to learn Habib as well. Uh, Don't go against undefeated fighters. Uh, They're undefeated for a reason. Yeah, they're going to lose sooner or later. Every MMA fighter will lose, but I think Israel, and then you ready for this one? And here's my analogy. You might like this. Um, You, uh, so Robert Whitaker. The last time he fought in a UFC octagon when it wasn't against you all, Ramiro. Ed Sheeran's photo, like that song photo was the number one song in the world. It was like four years ago. Like he, he rarely fights. He fought UL twice in a row. They were both in crazy wars, but he fights like once a year. I just, I think that's a little like ring rust that I think, is that a thing? Like I'm here, here's a fighter. I fought a year before my last one and then a okay. year before that. So Oh, I mean, I lost my last one, but before that, I won. So <laughs> we're not going with that. I just, uh, yeah. If, if if you had your way, you would want just uh, you win. You win in uh, two minutes with an armbar in the first round. Would you want to fight spring early in the year? You would want to fight three, four times a year, right? I would. I would definitely fight like end of this year. Oh, there you go. For sure. So like, I mean, yeah, but he's been injured and whatnot and i get that adesanya has the momentum behind him but i just think robert is the better fighter um i don't disagree with that and i think in a way we one thing we talked about on the show is in a way it's so he's undefeated and he's never lost as a middleweight all four of his losses whitaker have uh, came at the welterweight division so he's undefeated too as a middleweight he's really underrated as a middleweight fighter The the kid's amazing he's got power Another thing, too, who's younger, Israel or or Robert? I don't know. I think Robert's like 27 or 28, and then I'm not sure how old Adesanya is. Maybe he's like 26. How old are they? I thought the same thing. We talked about this on the show. Uh, Robert's 28, and Israel's 30. Like, I just felt like Israel was the younger fighter. He has a lot of swag, dance, talks. He's a little bit newer on the scene. And Whitaker's been on the Ultimate Fighter. He's been around forever. He's fought Steven Wonderboy Thompson. But he's the the younger fighter. So he might have that. It's crazy. It's That fight is awesome. I I cannot wait. UFC 243. Yeah, you want to bet on it? Yes. Okay. Let's do it. Okay, here. I got the bet. I got it. For we, there's two there's two uh, bets we can do. One, loser has to sit next to a live cobra. That could happen. A live or, cobra? 
Yeah. <laughs> or, okay. or, or two is we talked about having you, Gabe, pancakes over for dinner. You guys over for dinner, Daytona, have outside, have the kids run around. If Robert Whitaker wins, we'll buy you guys dinner. Even pancakes. We'll, we'll buy cupcakes, right? If Israel wins, you guys buy us dinner. Oh, okay. Yeah. Deal. Yeah, that's awesome. Deal. Shaking on it right now. <laughs> The first ever handshake through Skype through Fife and Adams. That just happened. <laughs> and then watch. When I, if I lose, I'm going to be like, oh, we didn't touch skin. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Uh, Megan Colley, Invecta FC 37, October 4th. Uh, we can't wait. Any last words? Anything you want to, uh, you know, oh, definitely real quick. Sponsor plug to the other side. Uh, how crazy. It was really cool. I reached out to her and. Uh, you know, I, I did. I, I was like, you know, Megan and uh, Felicia always talks great about you guys. And, you know, and I think uh, the Fight Bananas might be a part of the team in the near future. We're going to have her in the studio. So uh, it's really cool. Yeah, she's an awesome supporter of us. Like not only the females at the gym, but she does take care of some of the guys, too. But just, you know, she even sponsors gym. So she like she hooks it up, takes care of all of us. It's so good to us. Just so generous and supportive and she just loves seeing people go after their dreams like just genuinely loves it and she was an athlete too she ran track and field in college and you know she's just she's awesome she's always there for us always supportive and yeah they're the other side's awesome <laughs> yeah they really are we're excited we're gonna have her into the studio soon We'll have you guys into the studio soon. We talked about that. That's going to happen after your victory at Invicta 37. Um, yeah. Any last words? No, that's it. Thank you so much for having me on. And thank you to everybody who watches and supports. And, yeah, I appreciate all the love that I receive. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Uh, congratulations on the fight announcement. And we'll talk to you after your victory. Awesome. Thank you so much. Later. Bye.